Ladies and gentlemen, I am Yuzul. It is the 3rd of September 2014, and welcome once again to the Tribble Time Warp for Delta Rising. Cryptic have had a busy few days, particularly in their PR department. We've had the announcement of the extra Voyager cast, and if Smirky wasn't just baiting us along, I don't think that's the last cast announcement we're going to see. He did drop a few hints about an Easter egg hidden in the operations report over the weekend, although they may have taken it off since. However, there's been precious little of worth on the coding department, so I have been merrily grinding my way up on one of the characters trying to get to 51, just to see what happens for science, you know. Despite the fact that Gecko's saying that this is always something going to bug out this particular iteration of Yuzrael, oh well, it wouldn't be the first one I've chucked in the bin. However, it's shown up a few interesting little flaws. The first one, if you follow my Twitter at Yuzrael, is that we've got a slight terminal crash problem on some of the maps in some situations. We're still trying to pin it down. I would urge you to get over onto Triple if you've got even half an hour or an hour to spare. We're trying to nail down the cause of the GUID tables not having unique identifiers. There's a particular message, check my Twitter feed. It's always accompanied by a crash to desktop. The more people we have looking at that, the more data we can get to cryptic about situations that are causing it and hopefully the quicker we can get it nailed down because right now that is basically a game breaker for certain missions and certain systems. Happily, the Japori system does not appear to be affected, at least in a tactical escort retrofit. I've been merrily grinding my way through Norsekans for the last few hours. So, that's been working. On the other hand, it's shown up a few other interesting pointers for the team. The first one is in the skills menu. Now, bear in mind that the skill system is still wildly incomplete at this point. Gecko, as I say, has said that when they do get around to properly doing it, it will likely render previously level characters on Tribble obsolete, so be prepared for everything in this video to become obsolete rather than fixed. However, take a look at the Space Max skill points here, 323,000, on holodeck, those are 300,000 and 100,000 respectively. Now, before you get all excited that we are going to have increased skill point caps and you can have that uber build you've always lusted after but haven't been able to get on holodeck so far because you were that little bit short of points and we're running into the hard cap, well, I'm going to have to pour cold water on that plant because if I flick over onto a non-leveled character, Another iteration of you as well as that happens. And bring up the skills menu on this character. Bear in mind that there is no extra XP being earned on this version of Yuzrael, you'll see that the caps are still where they are on holodeck 300,000 and 100,000. So I have no clue what's going on there. Something very, very weird, that much is evident. While we're at it, a couple of little pointers on the Intrepid model. First off, the rear shuttle bay light, this white marker here. I had a look at the Voyager intro, I'm pretty sure that ought to be pulsing. Yes, I'm being that petty about the model, but since Cryptic seem to be gearing up for it as being their hero ship of the expansion, perhaps we ought to be, I'm just saying. The other thing of note is that as several people have pointed out, the Delta Flyer's predecessor, even though we never saw it in the show, the Aero Shuttle, this odd bulge on the base of the saucer, has had some work. You can see, even in this shot, and I'll just angle the ship to get it a bit better, that it has got functioning running lights, and there's perhaps more detail on there than you'd expect for a simple bit of hull detailing. In fact, it's positively three-dimensional at this point. There is actually a reason for this, and if I can get a bit closer to the space dock... Have I got and left the impulse engines at home again? No, nope, no I haven't, so why do I not have full of beer because we're in space dock orbit? Damn speed limits. Hang the manoeuvring thruster requirements, give me full impulse. Where it gets really interesting, however, is if you drop into the ship customizer and use one of the variant saucer sections, because these aren't quite finished. Let's pull something up. So, saucer... Well, for one thing, aero shuttle as a customization option. That's basically one giveaway. And even more of a giveaway is that the aero shuttle is now fully modeled, but the various variant saucers 
haven't yet had their docking ports done for it. You can see there that both the Cochrane and the Intrepid need to have their sources built up to accommodate the air shuttle. In fact, there's this circular part on the hull that is common to both. Now, that could be a variant, could just be where they're planning to put in the docking bays. Are we going to see a Tier 6 Intrepid? I have no idea. It would be complete speculation, but it would be an obvious money spinner for Cryptic to do a three-set Tier 6 version with the new um, things that they have been talking about in recent months, and I've overused the redacted joke in recent videos, so I'm not going to pull that one again. Anyhow, the Aero Shuttle, ladies and gentlemen, looks as though we'll be seeing that at some point. Hopefully it won't be quite as useless as the Aquarius. However, moving on to the Pew Pew, another interesting little effect that's turned up relates to ship customization. Now, if I pull this over, you can see that I've got the Aegis set equipped and the visuals enabled. Now, normally, on Holodeck, when you toggle visuals on and off, it updates immediately. Let's just try that. Deflect array, disable visuals. Um, yeah. Deflector A, enable visuals. Disable. Enable. Disable. Clunk. It's not updating these on the fly. It appears to only update the visuals for given components when you cross a zone boundary, which is kind of handy since that's what we're about to do. Right, so welcome to the Japori system, ladies and gentlemen. Norsicans, Norsicans, and more Norsicans. They are lacking in Goramba, fortunately. I'm running this on advanced difficulty at the moment, as you can see here. So the Talons are clocking about 77,000 health. Now, let's get on to the next point. Pull in the weapons consoles, fire, open fire on the Talon, knock its shields down. Now, at this point, I have a gravimetric torpedo in the aft slot. So, I'm going to enable high yield, swing round, turn aft, and it's immediately on to cooldown. No torpedo shot there. Let's swing out of arc again, close in on the talon, give it another run with the cannons, turn away again, it's starboard shields down, cooldown, no shot. Round we come again. Another pounding from the anti-protons, shields are gone, and we have a launch there, but it was a standard shot, we lost the high yield, so let's just kick round onto beam overload and quickly finish this one off, boom, as I say, 234 skill points, this is how a lot of us have been levelling on triple of late, just grinding and grinding and grinding the sacrifices we make for science, but let's try this again, so... High yield armed, destroyer escort targeted, we'll run in down to about 3 kilometers. make sure the aft shield is gone, turn to get the shot into exposed shield arc, and cooldown, no shot. Watch the bottom right hand corner, there's my marker for the torpedo tube. Fire again, rotate, cooldown, no shot. I don't know if this is a lag issue. It might well be, because I am playing this from Scotland. The game could be getting twitchy. Tribble does not quite have the resources Holodeck does. It's interesting that it's not an issue with regular war shots, however. So let's just try a torpedo spread instead. Lock onto the siphon, turn, and we have a war shot immediately. Spread's gone off without a problem, no sweat whatsoever. If it was lag, I'd expect this to be a universal problem with the torpedo tube. So, let's try again. Load up. Just get rid of this siphon frigate. Boomski, 13,002. Not too shabby. So, regular war shot. No problem. Torpedo spread's just coming back. In fact, we just had another one. So, we'll turn around, line up for a run. Okay. As before, hammer down the shields turn for the shot and boom a little bit of a delay but we got the war shot off on spread mode 
Now then, high yield. Running fire this time with the Siphon Frigate. On cooldown, no war shot. That was a clean firing solution. It wasn't just a marginal edging the arc or the range either. It is very definitely a high yield torpedo problem. Might just be the gravimetric device. Might just be the fact that it's firing a destroyable projectile. Occasionally it does work and I've not been able to figure out why. But let's pull away and cloak up for a second just so we can switch torpedo tubes. We'll see if it sticks with something like a quantum tube. I think I've got one of those stashed in the inventory. If this blasted little stinger will, there we go. Right, so cloak up, activate inventory, swap out the gravimetric. Let's go for a chroniton, something nice and visible, even though I'd normally never use these in the month of Sundays. Okay, and yes, I'm aware that the month of Sundays translates to about seven and a half months, so we'll call this the one for the winter, okay? Decloak. Open fire. Now then, high yield and turn for shot. We have cooldown and then we have a delayed war sh high yield volley. Okay, that's interesting. Regular war shots, not a problem. Let's try for a spread. And yes, that Garamba did just go into siege mode, so if I'm not careful, I'm about to get a javelin up my backside. Come on, fire the war shots. Oh, come on. We're out of range. Fine. Let's just turn around. I think we actually got the shot off. Okay, so high yield again. Lining up. Again, angle away. Tube goes on to cooldown. Bang, bang, bang. There's the high yield salvo. A second or so later, interestingly. And we'll just quickly kill this frigate while we're here. So it's interesting that we're getting that delay and then we're getting the shot from the chroniton torpedoes. Right, burn away again on evasive manoeuvres. Let's see what happens if we try something destroyable by default. Obvious choice there is get that power siphon out of my way. There we go, thank you. Cloak up. Okay, so what other candidates have we got? Well... Yeah, actually, Romulan Hyperplasma might be an interesting one to test, because obviously that always fires a destroyable salvo. So, let's pitch round. Those Siphon Drones are still tracking me for some reason. Irritating little Norsican gits that they are. Dump the cloak, open fire, and run past. Let's see if we get a standard volley. Yep, standard volley launch without too much difficulty. Round we come again. Let's try for high yield. Assuming there's anything left of the Siphon Frigate by the time the forward guns are done with it. Boom. Oh, whoops. Oh, well. Never mind, we've got the shot on these Power Siphon Drones. So, aft torpedoes. Boom, boom, boom. Launched without too much trouble, but we did have a stable firing solution for a few seconds there. So, we'll just run lateral for a second. Switch to torpedo spread. Back into arc with the Siphon Frigate. One, two, three. Okay, so that launched apparently without trouble. Around we come again. Arm Omega, arm high yield. Turn for shot. And launches without a problem. Hmm. Is it actually the combination of gravimetric plus high yield that's causing this, I wonder? No matter, we've got another couple of waves to go. Let's just quickly finish that, get ourselves some fresh victims. Right, more Norsicans. Where are you, you garumbo addicted? Ah, there you are. Disrupt fire. Perfect. Okay, so drop into cloak. Uh, do, 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 do. So the high... Hyperplasma Torpedo seems to be behaving itself. Let's try the Omega Launcher, because of course that's very similar to the Gravimetric in terms of its firing modes. Destroyable at high yield, regular shots and regular spreads. Now then, we'll line up on this Siphon Frigate, Arm Torpedo Spread, pull up, dump the cloak, and fire. 
Okay, so we have a plasma spread without too much difficulty. Pretty much an instant launch as well. Let's arm for high yield once we get the shot. Turn, run past the siphon frigate. Couple of seconds delay. That could just be lag. But it did launch the war shot without any problems. So. Boom, 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 boom. Spread and be mobile over functioning. Fine, I'm happy to report. The Norsecans perhaps less so. So, Omega. Top spread. And fire the shot. And war shot goes pretty much immediately without difficulties. Okay, balance the shields, standard stuff, really, you all know how this gets played. We'll just turn away, roll in, high yield is armed, and as before we'll run past the Siphon Frigate, and then angle for a shot onto that vulnerable forward arc with the high yield. Cooldown goes, we do not have a launch, we do not have a torpedo launch, it's on cooldown. Let's defeat the firing solution for a moment, turn out of arc, switch on to the next siphon since that was about to blow, run and pass it. Do we have launch? Yes we do. And immediate detonation as well. Fascinating. As I say, the gravimetric seems to work about one shot in four. These are on auto fire of course, before you ask the obvious question. Let's try that again. High yield, roll round. In before we blow anything vital up and do we have launch we have cooldown but we have no torpedo fine and while we're at it let's just blow away that last zone so who's left anybody okay one more wave to take care of I think maybe a few residual stingers I'm not sure either way full impulse Boom. okay just that one residual and probably very much in need of a change of underwear Norsican. Right, so where are we? Yeah, this is producing uh, about 1,000 to 1,500 skill points per run, so let's depart the system. Actually, before we do that, let's all stop. Flick these over to enable just for a second. Again, they're not updating live. So, enable, 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 and then warp out. Is this going to work? Let's find out. Boom. And yet yeah, the visuals are back on. So it updates basically whenever you cross a zone line. Okay, fine. Well, I must admit I just do tend to find those a little bit distracting. So we'll just flick them off for the moment. Disable. 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 And for those of you wondering why I'm doing this on Advanced and not Elite, let me just show you, because this is kind of hilarious. So, into options, we want the difficulty up to Elite. Now, if you recall, the Talons and the Garambas were deploying about 77, 78,000. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay, right, give me a... They were deploying about 77, 78,000 hit points per. Now, is this an actual server down or is it just a hiccup? Don't tell me they've pulled Tribble down for a patch. This, this would be ironic. Connection to the login server timed out. Excuse me a moment. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so if nothing else, that patch has changed our login screen. We now have Delta Rising Red, that should make some Klingons very happy. Planet has got some basic cloud animation on it, hopefully we'll see a little more, and maybe we'll get a change of logo to the Delta Rising vision. I'm slightly surprised that hasn't been done already, actually. You'd think it would have been done if they were planning to, it's, they've got the art after all. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, that has been the Triple Time Warp. We'll see what the patch brings once the server comes back and once we get the patch notes on the forums. Until next time, I have been Yusuf. That has been the Triple Time Warp for the 3rd of September. And I'll bid you farewell.